Satan, listen my dear people, Satan is the master of the sense realm. He knows that until the believer is properly mentored to a point where you become spiritually minded, there is such a thing as being spiritually minded and there is such a thing as being carnally minded. Are we Bible students? The Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. What does it mean to be carnally minded? That means your convictions are based on the impulses of the flesh, the impulses of the sense realm. If I check my account and I see a thousand naira there and I look and find myself in one small room and I'm trekking with no vehicle, I use those things to now describe myself and I feel stupid for believing what the word of God has said. So because Satan knows that except the believer is properly mentored to be spiritually minded, minded the default state is to use the things around you there are many wealthy people who are not seated in heavenly places there are many intelligent people who are not seated in heavenly places being seated in heavenly places is a status that comes as a gift by being in Christ the moment you have that understanding now you understand what I mean by the statement that we made earlier that the victory of the believer is not dependent or the dominion of the believer is not dependent on the victory of Christ alone. It's dependent on your understanding. There is a consciousness that swallows up limitation. You can sit down in your one room and take Gary with honor still seated in heavenly places and you force that reality in that room to change and look like what the word of God says. Do you believe what I'm saying? I'm seated with Christ. I'm seated with Christ. Seated with Christ. It has made me an overcomer. Seated with Christ. If you don't trust me, trust the person I'm seated with. Hallelujah. There are times that when they are giving offering in church, children may not have offering, but the people they are seated with can bail them out. Is that true? They can be passing the offering bag and you're seated with no offering and someone seated close to you. Who you are seated close to matters, spiritually speaking, so you don't feel bad now. But physically speaking, because the person you are seated close to is seated with Christ. The Bible kept telling us and showing us the picture of God and Jesus a number of times when Stephen was about to be retired out of the many things the Bible records that he saw was that scenario the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of the father in honor of a Messiah who was coming home ladies and gentlemen I submit to you there is no greatness for anybody in Christ who does not understand this you are not the first to come from a weak background you are not the first to start ministry with all kinds of limitations your status becomes your advantage in this wicked world he that cometh from above let me indoctrinate you again he that cometh from above cometh from above you will always reflect your location he that cometh from above he that cometh from above is above all the Bible says he that is of the earth do you know he's he's listing different realities alongside the consciousness that activates them that means you have an an option of having an above mentality an earthly mentality and we will know your conviction by your speaking the Bible says he speaketh of the earth he that cometh from heaven is above all what is all above everything above all you don't see limitations in your life your only limitation is the voice of God and the law of process what business does a plane have with a mountain what business does a plane have with water it is above the concept of mountain and river and valley is a relative statement. 
is very relative. A person who is flying 35,000 feet above sea level does not even know that he just passed a mountain. So what you call a mountain is a representation of the realm you are looking at things from. Are we together? What is the business of someone who is flying 35,000 above sea level with a snake that is moving on a mountain? Or a dog that is barking on the ground? Or an arm robber who is waiting on the ground? No. There are certain realities that will never reflect in your life until your mindset changes. Now, let me tell you the balance. Most believers have not been taught this positional advantage properly. It has translated to pride without revelation. So there are people who cannot start small. They say, God forbid, I will never take Gary in my life again. I will never take this. I can't stay in this one room. I am. No, 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 no. This is not your physical realities does not. If a king stays in a hut, you call that hut a palace. It's not. It's not. Listen, it is the it is the king's influence that changes the environment, not the environment. Are we together? There's a particular king in this nation. I think he's still alive. He was king at age two. Two years. Some of you may come from his region. Two years he became king. And you see the small boy with all kinds of rappers that look like they just wanted to snap him. Whether you believe him or not, he's king. And from that time till now, he's been king. Your positional advantage your positional advantage i always marvel at an aircraft as it lifts you will see it turning very slowly lazily sometimes you are looking at your time and you're almost getting angry and it looks like the plane spoiled just be patient let it get to the end of the runway and it starts moving to a point that you cannot even tell what speed is at and in literally without exaggeration in less than a minute is already far above you, you you just keep looking at things and houses now become like toys the bible now says we have been raised up it's a spiritual location so when a spirit talks verify what realm before you waste your time with heart attack and pain and whatever it is if someone looks at you and says you will never amount to anything before you waste your energy verify from what standpoint I truly believe this about myself and I'm proposing this understanding that this is what sponsors your victorious living you will waste the experience of Easter if you just celebrate Jesus alone you must know that as he was raised I was raised with him I was raised with him I was not raised with him as an apostle I was raised with him as a believer I am first a believer before a man of God when you strip me of everything I have the last thing that will be left is my status as a believer and the Bible tells that it is the greatest status behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God not men of God sons of God is a greater status than a man of God a man of God is a description that shows the geography of your assignment a man of God does not describe your identity with God but being a son of God the child of a CEO and a board member in that company in terms of status and access who is greater hmm. do you believe what I'm teaching you ah. mortal man awesome God mortal man awesome that I'm just a mortal man, awesome Unassisted, outside of Christ, we are mortal men. The word mortal means death doomed, subject to deterioration at any point. That's what it means to be mortal. But when you are joined to Christ, let's continue. So in discussing the identity of the believer, the first thing we are looking at is your positional advantage. 
your exalted position elevated in ranking I wish we had time we would have looked at the adumbration of this in Genesis chapter 41 Genesis chapter 41 when you read from verse 40 what happened to the man you called Joseph in Egypt was a foreshadow of what was going to happen to the believer are we together now so Joseph interprets the dream of Pharaoh and in an instant he's exalted thou shall be over my house Pharaoh said and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than thou 41 it says and Pharaoh said unto Joseph see I have set thee over all the land 42 it says and Pharaoh took off the ring of his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck 43 and he made him to ride on the second chariot which we he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt seated with Christ in that exalted position number two the second dimension of our oneness with Christ that helps to establish the victory that we now have in Christ or the second dimension of our identity in Christ I meant to say is our oneness with Christ so we're looking at two things as far as the identity of the believer is concerned number one our positional advantage and then number two 